Like most of the organized RC flying clubs, uh, we are in somewhat of a remote area. You know, we don't fly in the middle of subdivisions and that kind of thing. So, but what comes with uh, that uh, you know, remote setting also uh, comes with a lack of utilities, uh, most no notably electricity. And uh, for years and years, that really wasn't a problem. Uh, but with the growing popularity of electric planes, uh, you know, found a need to be able to to recharge our batteries out at the flying field and uh well we were doing for a while a lot of guys were you know charging you know, using their car uh under the hood of their car using their field charger there or even worse inside the car which is dangerous because the lipo batteries do pose somewhat of a fire hazard so um we wanted to be sure we got something more convenient and safer and therefore uh, we added uh, a 12 volt uh solar array I'm going to give you an overview, actually a little bit more of an overview, a little more details on our solar array that we use for our RC field. Okay, so on the roof of our pavilion is uh, two 100 watt solar panels and uh, these are these are mounted flush to the roof. Now in the, our area, our location of the country, the, more, the most optimal uh, angle for these would be about 45 degrees. Uh, however, uh, we opted for um, to lay these down on top just for ease of installation, the aesthetics, um, and also we we, we, uh, we didn't want to make them a target either. Uh, this area does allow hunting or close to this area. Anyway, look at our weather vane up here. We've got uh, yeah, there's some dimples in there from hunters taking target practice so we didn't want to put these up and present a, uh, a target so yeah we're sacrificing a little bit of efficiency uh, just you know, to make it a little more inconspicuous and that's fine because even this way uh, this is providing plenty of electricity uh, for our needs and so those solar panels uh, feed uh, down through here through this conduit uh, into our cabinet here where we have it. It's actually a dual use cabinet. We use this for our buddy boxes and stuff which are, are gone for the season, um, you know, for flight instruction, student training. Um, but then also we've got our, uh, our solar array equipment in here as well so what we've got there is we've got these two controllers now they're the same controller but they're set up differently so this one here is set up as the charge controller so all of the juice coming from the solar panels eh, probably about 19 volts or so all comes into this char charge controller which then charges the batteries which are located underneath in that cabinet and those batteries are uh are uh large marine deep cycle batteries and uh, so this basically keeps those batteries uh, topped off if it has to it goes in the fast charge mode uh, most of the time it's probably just sitting at float charge which is essentially a trickle charge and uh, that also has the option to and actually it's set to automatic to uh, uh, I guess for lack of a better term stir the tanks <laughs> where it will actually um, I believe what it's doing is it's actually overcharging the batteries for a short term and that gets the electrolyte uh, to kind of stir and move around so it doesn't become stagnant. Um, so yeah, hopefully we'll have a Apollo 13 type disaster there when it's, like I said, stirring the tanks. So uh, that keeps the batteries charged. This controller here, this is set to be what's called a load controller and all of the juice all of the uh, power from the batteries comes up and runs through this controller <clears throat> and then from out from this controller it then goes to our charging bench over here so reason for this is that the deep cycle batteries if they get below a certain voltage or any uh, wet cell batteries that get below a certain voltage it can cause permanent damage um, it's, it's not, not going to kill them but it's going to shorten the life of them and so what this does is this protects the batteries so if any part of this system drops below i think it's set right now to 11 and a half volts or maybe 11 volts if anything if the system drops below that voltage that will stop 
it'll cut off the electricity flow out to the charging bench. So it'll basically shut the system down until the batteries come back up to uh, their their threshold voltage before it will turn the system back on and allow the electricity to flow. So um, we've had quite a few uh, <laughs> You know, people charging at one time, large battery packs, success packs, and so forth. We have yet for this system to shut itself down because we pulled that much, um, you know, juice out of the batteries. We haven't gotten to that threshold yet, so um, it's we we haven't needed it yet, but it's there in case we do, and you know, protect our investment. Yep. Also in here we have our uh, PA system that runs off 12 volts, fortunately, so uh, we can do our PA system when we have our our uh, announcements when we have big events and that kind of thing uh also you know we can plug a phone into there and play music through our system anytime we want as well so that's uh that's very nice also uh these are disconnects uh just per manufacturer's recommendations have disconnects for the lines coming in from your solar panel and uh into your uh your charge controller as well and then we also have a panel here where we've got uh, 12 volt you know, banana plugs here uh, for some accessories that, that we might want to plug in as well as a uh, you know, accessory outlet as well sometimes uh, you know, you know we're running a cell phone or something playing music put your car charger into there and keep your phone charged or uh, actually we put an inverter in here too and we needed some tools out here Dremel something like that we actually can run a limited amount of 110 volt using an inverter and then uh, these three switches here has a red green and blue and uh, those are for our, our lights um, we have night flying events and uh, here's our lights and so we uh, red green and blue we can turn on just the reds just the greens blues or combinations to make different uh, color lights and then that way we're out here for one of our night flies uh, we have just enough light here to see where you're walking and not tripping tripping over things but not too much to where it kind of ruins your night vision. Everything coming in from the array, the battery array, through that load controller comes through here and this is a junction basically it's a disconnect and from that disconnect we've got two lines coming through each of those lines is 30 amp line and so these these stations here these are these three here are on one line, 130 amp line. Each of these is individually fused, 10 amp fuses. That's the limit of these binding posts. But so if you have a banana jacks or alligator clips, something like that on your field charger, you can go ahead and plug into there. And uh, these stations, like I said, 10 amps, uh, you can charge a 2S, 2200, you know, two of them at a time, no problem at all. That's not pulling 10 amps. And then, and then the other 30 amp line is this, and that's one of those 30 amp lines dedicated to just this station. This is our high, our high current station. So there's a 30 amp fuse in here, and uh, you know we got the much larger you know lugs on here, and that's for charging you know the larger five and six S or the uh, you know high capacity, high capacity batteries. Also our bench top, and again there's that you know potential of fire with lipos, porcelain. Uh, floor tile and so these are uh, one foot by two foot 12 inch by 24 inch and uh, That way they are fireproof uh, Unfortunately, you know the rest of it's not that that surface is and if something happens to one of these they get cracked or broken or whatever we can just lift these up from the bottom and replace it quite easily Also, we do have this uh, uh, shade here keeps the batteries from cooking in the sun uh, Also that way you can also more easily read the screen on your charger because you don't have the glare on it And uh, we can just drop this thing down here when not in use that way it Somewhat protects everything from the elements. Well, it's not in use uh, and We can also flip this all the way back as well uh, Which we do sometimes if it's going to be really windy because this thing is like a big sail and it could definitely <laughs> pull this whole thing over so okay, now There that is in the uh, in the down position We've had the system up and running now for four years, or it might even be five, I, I, I'm not even sure, but uh, haven't had any issues with it, just the regular maintenance of the, the four deep cycle batteries, add water to those as needed, 
every now and again one of these binding posts gets broken i don't know if it's somebody that just doesn't know how to use it or maybe it's just the exposure to the elements and they get brittle anyway on occasion we'll have to replace one of these not really a huge deal there's been plenty of times where all four stations were in use and matter of fact more than four chargers sometimes we'll have multiple chargers on one station as well you know we're charging batteries practically all day long and the system keeps up when you have a bank of chargers all hooked up to the same line like this uh, when one of them starts to charge a battery or stops charging a battery the voltage of the whole system can fluctuate a little bit just because the load is changing and it's not going above or below any sort of a maximum or minimum threshold voltage or anything like that but there's a couple of guys that have some chargers that are real sensitive to that and they'll throw an error or something about uh, unstable input voltage but from what I've found uh, these other like the four button chargers they all run the same firmware none of those chargers seem to have any problem with the uh, input voltage moving around a little bit a possible way to minimize that fluctuation though might be just to add uh, more uh, deep cycle batteries to the battery array here's a schematic of the system for anyone that's interested also I'm going to leave some more details in the description as well if you have any questions on the system, leave those in the comments. I usually reply to those same day. And thanks for watching.